Hello and welcome to episode 5 of the Verbal to Visual podcast. I am your host, Doug Neal, and in today's episode, I'm excited to chat with Maria Stout, who has a very interesting story that I think you're going to enjoy hearing. We chat about what it was like for Maria to be diagnosed with ADHD as an adult in the process of finishing up a few undergrad prereqs with an eye toward a grad program in occupational therapy. You'll get to hear about the tools that she discovered to help her lean into her strengths as a learner. And then we also chat about what's coming up in the future for Maria and the potential of creating a project to help other adults and children with ADHD. So lots of interesting topics in this one. You can find the show notes for today's episode at verbaltovisual.com slash five. Let's get into it. All right, Maria, welcome. Thanks for chatting today. I'm going to uh, throw it to you right off just to give you the chance to introduce yourself, um, let folks know who you are, where you're coming from, and what you're working on with your sketch noting skills. Sure. Thanks, Doug, for chatting with me. I am Maria Stout. I'm in Virginia, and I uh, was first first found sketch noting um, in the last year um, when I started taking college classes as prerequisites for a graduate program I was interested in pursuing. Um, and through that process, uh, sought out a um, some help and discovered that I have ADHD. Um, and that that was part of what was impacting my um, educational journey. And so I started looking for resources that might help me um, process all my schoolwork. And I started using mind maps originally. And then one class, I just decided to draw everything for my anatomy physiology class uh, because I felt like there were just too many words for me to think it through. Um, and I posted it on an online forum for ADHD and said, has anyone ever done this? Like, is this, an, you know, it, does this exist? Is this helpful? And someone, uh, someone wrote, actually, it's called sketchnoting. You know, look it up on YouTube and see what you find. And I found you. <laughs> um, and so I started watching through your videos, which were super duper helpful um, for me as a new sketch noter and as an adult learner trying to go back to school and figure out how to make it work. Um, so in the process, of doing all that, I have decided to take at least the summer and probably the summer and fall um, off from classes while we are in the middle of COVID. And I um, would prefer not to do my prerequisites that are left mm. um, online. And so I have been thinking about courses that I would, I have wanted to share information I know with other people um, and feel like this idea of doing course creation around uh, sketch noting works really well with just how I think. And so your class on, you know, how to develop a course with sketch notes has definitely got my interest peaked and I'm working my way through that. and. Um, so yeah, I would love to chat with you about sort of my, my process and thinking I'm at the early side of, mm -hmm. you know, creating probably a course bundle of different classes around this idea of tools to help with ADHD. Wow, that is uh, quite the journey. Thank you. Maria, for, for sharing that. And I think my first follow-up question is uh, more around like what it was, what was it like for you to um, kind of discover when going back to school in this graduate school program to have that be the point at which, um, you know, you've identified that you have ADHD. And I'm curious how that made you think about your previous schooling experiences. And uh, if like, 
things clicked in place or just kind of generally what that um, realization was was like for you? Yeah, so, you know, it's just been a fascinating journey and, you know, in a lot of ways, so freeing to understand Mm -hmm. more about, you know, areas of strength and areas of challenge, and even to understand why I've pursued different routes in terms of education Mm -hmm. and in terms of career um, and in terms of just life. Um, So I'm 46, so I've been around for a little bit. Um, So yeah, like it, for me, it has been a hugely freeing diagnosis because it meant, oh my goodness, they're like resources and things I can Mm -hmm. do to work with this instead of just feeling like I'm overwhelmed. Um, And so, so yeah, it's there for me, there has been nothing but great out of an adult diagnosis (laughs) of ADHD. Um, And yeah, I've thoroughly been consuming every, you know, book article and idea I can find and then trying to test it in my own life and see, Mm. you know, what helps, what doesn't. And, you know, it is interesting. It's, It's a spectrum and it affects people in different ways. Um, so, you know, my experience is not everyone's experience. Um, but I, you know, have been learning a lot about my own experience. And even if I end up not going to grad school, so the classes I've been taking have been the, the undergraduate level prerequisite classes that I didn't have for my undergraduate degree. Um, and gotcha. so, so I've been taking anatomy and physiology, you know, uh, psychology classes and statistics classes um, over the last year to sort of prep for all the requirements to apply um, to the program I'm looking at. So, gotcha. And what's the the program that you're interested in? So I'm looking at um, occupational therapy, and I'm interested in pediatric occupational therapy, specifically working with kids with disabilities. Um, and I'm still trying to figure out if OT is the right route. Mm-hmm. I'm mm-hmm. I'm a very creative thinker, and I've worked with a lot of families with disabilities, and I've helped my kids through early intervention programs. And I I want to be able to use that creativity to help families. And occupational therapy was sort of the most clear route to doing that that I saw. Um, but I've started talking with different professionals who all think I need to start my own business Hmm. around that idea as sort of a support structure to occupational therapists, to developmental pediatricians, to um, the parents, since I really want to focus on giving parents tools. Um, So we'll see. Um, I'm still, still playing around with that question. Right, right. Well, that's that's super interesting. And I do see a lot of um, opportunities there for you to help and play that supportive role for families. Uh, and I, I mean, it's great to hear that the uh, adult diagnosis of ADHD was such a, a freeing experience that, you know, led you to these resources and just better understanding how you work. Um, I know that that's not a, not an infrequent, um, uh, request or comment to come my way in connection to sketch noting, either with parents or teachers working with students, um, who uh, have ADHD and the way that, you know, sketch noting, bringing in more visuals into the way that students learn and, and communicate and process things, uh, how valuable of an addition that can make to the the process. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. So I, I think there's some that. great I was, was going to ask you if you yeah. had a lot of questions around that topic because I feel like it really does. It's a wonderful addition to the toolkit of yeah. HD. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and 
yeah, it has been these kind of like informal conversations from from time to not, to time. But I think there's uh, probably an, an opportunity to go uh, deeper there into that intersection. Um, and I guess since that kind of like um, those two things, uh, this kind of intersection of ADHD and, and sketch noting happened more or less at this same time for you. I'm curious just to hear from in your own words, kind of what the um, the the benefit of of mind mapping and sketch noting, uh, what role that played in your um, kind of learning uh, ability or your learning journey. Uh, how would you describe kind of that that intersection of, of sketch noting in that world? Sure. So I would say that, well, so let me add that when I did, so I did like the full 10 plus hours worth of testing with a um, first a social worker and then with a PhD um, mm. to like, I figured if I'm looking at graduate school and I may have any learning disabilities that are impacting that. I wanted to know the full scope of them. Right. Um, so I did do like the full battery of everything. And and so I'll mention that in that process, they also um, diagnosed me with a reading disability, which I guess the informal diagnosis of that would be um, dyslexia, even though mm. I don't think of myself as dyslexia, dyslexic because I can read, mm. but that that diagnosis made me realize that my my processing of words. I, I've always known like it took me a lot longer to understand a concept or to read something, and process what that meant. So get to the comprehension. Mm piece. And that's actually what drove me to seeking out a diagnosis of something. Uh, yeah. Because I was like, this is crazy. Like, I am smart, and I have to read a sentence three times to understand it. Like, this is there's something mm -hmm. going on here. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, so the way when I got the diagnosis of the, the reading disability with the ADHD, that made me think, um, I should really start thinking about like if if words are part of my challenge in comprehension, what is my strength in comprehension? Mm -hmm. And I was like, my strength is really the visual and is seeing images. And I have always said I think in pictures. Um, and so I started playing with the idea of like, how can I visually represent this information that is very word based? Because at the time I was in two psychology classes and, you know, that's all about words. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, and so that's where I started using mind maps because that gave me an opportunity to make it more visual. And so I would mind map my chapter and, you know, the different sort of bullet points of a um, of an outline would become, you know, my different spokes. But what I found was I got overwhelmed by the visual processing of all those words once the mind map was created. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and so so I sort of dropped that as a tool. Um, and then in the fall, I think was when I discovered sketch noting. And in the fall, I was taking the first semester of anatomy and physiology and the first semester of a, um, a math statistics class. And so I started playing with it, you know, in some ways that's a great you know, anatomy and physiology is a great class to be trained to learn yeah. sketch noting because there's so much mm -hmm. visual mm -hmm. to, you know, the organs and the labeling and the, um, so that was a great, you know, playground for sketch noting. Um, so yeah, I'm, 
did that answer your question? <laughs> yeah, no, and I appreciate you kind of sharing what that exploration looked like for you, and uh, particularly that piece of, um, you know, any any process by which you kind of. Uh, figure out how you work and uh, how you learn that deeper understanding of um, your strengths and your weaknesses. I just love how you kind of, um, I, I feel like it would be easy and I'm sure it is easy for folks to kind of uh, dwell on the weaknesses because I'm sure that's a very frustrating thing, uh, but to instead kind of focus on your strengths and that just kind of like the somewhat of a switch that it sounds like you made from being like, okay, um, the way my brain processes words, um, there's some things going on there. So let's try leaning in more on the visual processing and see how that goes. Uh, and just continuing down that direction um, until you got to a place that seems to be working well for you. And uh, starting with mind maps, as you mentioned, but then I can kind of see, you know, the more branches to that mind map and, you know, the number of words in each of the, the bubbles that, that you fill, like I can see that becoming overwhelming. Um, but then having the opportunity to, to lean more on the um, drawn objects uh, as kind of a nice anchor to, to what well, you're and I think I think for me, the, the sketching helps me to stay focused enough on the information because yeah. I think a lot of the, the challenge to like the comprehension piece and is the, my brain skipping off to something else. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. there's something about the drawing of the information that engages me enough that it keeps me focused on the information. So I actually got accommodations that I had my textbook so it would read to me. So I would listen to the textbook and I would draw out what it was telling me. Um, and that way I could draw on my strength of listening mm. and my strength of drawing to keep myself focused without getting stuck in the words as um, the point of overwhelm. Right. Um, so. And I imagine too that the... Um the process of listening uh, is much different than the process of reading. I'm guessing yes. that was a, a piece to the puzzle there. Right. Yeah. 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 That's very. Well, and you know, your, your comment about, you know, whether it's a negative or positive diagnosis, I, I think, you know, it's, there's a, a big difference between a diagnosis when someone's young you know, child, teen, young adult, and that you wonder, like, how is this going to impact the long haul? What does mm. this look like? Whereas, you know, you have a diagnosis coming from, you know, age 46, you kind of feel like I've already lived this and seen right. what it looks like. And honestly, more tools and more understanding can only be positive. <laughs> so, right. so I've tried not to dwell on the what if I had known, you know, yeah. and just focus on, okay, so these are the strengths I know now and let's move forward with it. That's great. I think that's a great perspective. Uh, and again, I, I appreciate you kind of sharing so much of that journey just because I know that there are, are a bunch of teachers and parents and students that are like, yes, thank you, Maria, for like telling us your your journey and, and that story. Um, so that was great to be able to uh, explore that a bit. And uh, I think that sets you up really well for the uh, type of things that you're creating now. Um, so let's bring that in. Why don't we uh, hop back to, um, you know, the the topic that you wanted to explore today around um, some some course creation that you're you're thinking about. Uh, yeah, share a few more of the details and uh, so the question connected to that that you'd like to explore. Sure. So I am. I have been trying to find sort of what is my common thread around which I want to create a, you know, a, a bundle of various courses. And 
I was originally thinking it was tools to help parents um, with visual tools that they could use at home, um, such as visual scheduling and mm -hmm. visual list making and, you know, game making out of chores and those sorts of things. But I, I've been sort of, the more I look at it, the more I feel like I, my interest isn't just in equipping parents. And I've been trying to find like, what is that little thread that sort mm -hmm. of attaches to these different things? And, and yesterday, um, actually yesterday, uh, my thought was, I started thinking, well, maybe it's, maybe it's ADD, maybe it's mm. ADHD, because really the, the parenting tools I'm talking about are, or thinking of are all tools to help parents of kids with ADHD um, or to help parents have ADHD with parenting kids. <laughs> so mm, it's sort yeah. of, but you know, both ways. And then I was like, you know, I, I wrote, you know, my research paper last summer for my psych class was on the adult diagnosis of ADHD mm. um, and on tools and resources sort of beyond medication, because I think um, there's a limited understanding of ADHD that if you medicate, that will solve mm. the focus problem. But there, there's so many more things going on than just what medication can do. And I, I can tell you medication has been huge for me. I am, um, for me, it, it made the a huge difference in my ability to focus. And I can tell when my medicine is running out because I start mm -hmm. writing the wrong letters because I'm thinking of the next word and I I don't finish the word I'm on. Right. <laughs> and so, so as soon as my as soon as my writing and my note taking starts to like skip to new letters, I I tend to go, okay, what time is it? Like Hmm. Did, I, did I forget my mess? <laughs> um, <laughs> mm -hmm. So I will say like medication has been hugely helpful, but I think um, it, there are so many other tools in terms of um, life skills and scheduling and using timers and using lists and, and so many things and, you know, visual note taking and sketch noting mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. are, incredibly valuable in so many contexts that um, it's got me kind of excited about the idea of, well, maybe I could start with, you know, what does adult, what are some non-medication tools for adults with ADHD? Um, and I am really curious to ask you sort of your thoughts on, on, how to build out from a central theme mm. um, and the question about audio versus video versus PDF and the combo of those. <laughs> um, and especially as you are starting a podcast, which is right. audio based. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I would love to hear your thoughts. Yeah, well, those are uh, great questions and um i have some fairly vivid memories of kind of the early days of my work in sketch noting and you know trying to decide uh and this was like before verbal to visual started trying to decide like what was the the central topic uh that i wanted to explore and what's the um the kind of overarching theme and something that, you know, I was fairly confident that I would enjoy exploring for a number of years and potentially for the rest of my life. Um, so right. I think it's, it's good to be, you know, thinking about what that central theme might be. And also, you know, not putting too much pressure on, on it to, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be a thing that you dedicate the next 30 or 40 years to. Um, but it is worth, I think, uh, kind of identifying that that solid foundation that you're excited to build upon. Um, 
and uh, both of the, the pieces that you mentioned make make sense to me, like on the one hand, tools to help parents with these uh, kind of various topics. Um, but then I do see how focusing it around ADHD, just the the level of resonance that it seems to have with you and your um, experience. Uh, I, at least in, in listening, I feel like I'm more drawn to to that as a central theme for you. Um, and uh, what I think that gets at too is, especially in the, the beginning of starting to, uh, you know, create anything online in particular, uh, the, the more focus in the beginning, the better. Um, just because it helps, it, it's so much easier for, you know, the right people to make their way to your work when right. it does have a certain level of focus to it. So even the, the fact that you mentioned starting with, um, uh, you know, focusing the things you're creating around uh, ADHD uh, with, adult, with adults and like non-medication tools, like that feels like such a, a sweet spot that people are going to be drawn to um, because I'm, I'm sure there are lots of folks out there looking for those types of tools. Uh, and that also provides a nice branching off point um, for, uh, you know, all sorts of different age ranges in terms of the tools right. that you're creating and um, yeah, different, different settings. Uh, yeah, I feel like there, there's a lot of depth to that as a focus. And it also reminds me of something that I feel like was um, hit home pretty well in um, my school experience on my way to becoming a, a high school teacher. Is that all of the kind of foundational principles um, connected to, you know, uh, making accommodations for, or, um, you know, addressing any particular special needs, uh, for folks with kind of any type of, um, learning disability, all of those things are helpful to everyone as well. Uh, so true. Yeah. So I think that that's, uh, that provides almost an unlimited jumping off point from there. Uh, so that's what has me excited for you about, having uh, ADHD as is more of the the central theme. Um, how does that sound to you? I mean, it's kind of like, I, I do feel like there are a lot of like gut feelings involved in choosing that central theme. You know, you want to feel that excitement, but you right. like that excitement in the moment, but also like, okay, do a little bit of projecting into the future to be able to see if like, is, is that uh, enough of a theme that the the branches of it are also exciting to me as well. Yeah. Um, so, and so uh, yes. And I think that's where um, I do think this is probably something I can really dig into long-term because, you know, the parenting piece um, was largely learned in the context of my experience as a parent of an adopted child with ADHD. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of those tools, I didn't even know I had ADHD. Like right. I was, I was working on things to help my kid. Um, and so, so, I mean, I feel like I've spent 16, you know, 17 hmm. years, like researching the parent side of that. And now oh, yeah. I'm like, now I'm coming at it from the personal adult side of it. And, um, and then even, you know, the opportunity over the last year to, to be in the college environment, mm. academic world, again, yes. with it. And I mean, I will say, like, the opportunity to go back to school, and to feel like I actually got to excel Mm -hmm. in areas that I have thought I was horrible at and realized that those areas were subjects that were so word heavy that 
I got stuck in the words and um, I, it was crazy. You know, this is not going to be everyone's experience, but my first anatomy and physiology test came back and the teacher said he had never in his career had someone get a hundred on their first test. Hmm. And I, it turned out to be mine. And <laughs> like, that was just insane. Like I've always struggled to get like C's, maybe B minuses on anything science related. And, you know, I've stuck to like the creative arts and, you mm. know, and so, so yes, I, I think there's a lot of, hmm. um, a lot of different points of personal experience with ADHD. And I think because, be, you know, partially because of my ADHD, like I need to be building something that I am passionate about and yes. do have interest in or else it will fall off the radar very quickly. <laughs> um, so I, I think that's true for everyone, but I can definitely yeah. say that's true for me. So. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. I, I think that's that's amazing. Thank you for sharing that, that story from college too. That's so great. Um, and I'm with you 100% on, you know, I, identifying uh, that topic that you choose to be your central theme. Um, this deep personal resonance, and also um, that it's not like uh, a, a topic that 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 personal reson resonance can continue to to grow and expand as you learn more like about e ADHD and talk with other people and like I've had the similar experience with you know choosing sketch noting to be the the central theme uh because you know even after the first couple of years of, of sketch noting and getting some amount of uh experience and uh some skills there like for me, it feels like a, a never ending journey of exploration and skill building and trying these different applications. And uh, that's what keeps it interesting for me because I feel like there's always new things to explore that I enjoy applying to whatever I'm learning or working on. And I kind of see that uh, likely being the case for you as well as you right. explore these yeah. topics. And in addition to like helping other people in these big, important ways, it sounds like right, and uh, I, just, I can also I see love, you helping like, yourself. I love the communication of information I'm learning, and mm. so the idea of you know continuing to to research and interview and pursue people about you know tools for ADHD and being able to share that with others like that that is very exciting to me. So I think I think mm. that's probably the central topic. Yeah. Well, that's super exciting. Um, well, with going forward with that as the, uh, as a central topic, and of course, you know, there's opportunities for you to, uh, shift that and change in the future. But, um, assuming that that is the case, let's spend a little bit of time on that part two of the question of, um, you know, what might be a, a format for you to start exploring it. Um, and you mentioned, you know, kind of the three major categories of making videos, uh, sharing, you know, static sketched images, and then maybe working with written or audio, um, all of which are, are viable, I think, because of the overlap with um, sketch noting and, you know, visual processing uh, much of it. I think you will want there to be some sort of visual form to right. it. Uh, but there's, there's plenty of opportunities to blend any of them, right? Cause even with, you know, we mentioned doing a podcast around sketch noting, um, but there's, there's no reason you can't weave in, you know, a visual summary of that podcast episode. Uh, and then, you know, with any written piece, there can be images embedded in, in the thing that you write. Um, and I guess my... My gut, my first suggestion would probably be to um, uh, try to identify one to start with. Like, I feel like at the the stage that we're at with verbal to visual, 
um, I kind of try, I guess I'm maybe working toward having some things that live in each of those formats. Uh, so, so get to the point where I'm kind of hitting all of these buckets, but not like trying to start with that from the very beginning. Um, so do you have a sense just as far as what you're the most excited about or, or drawn to in those categories that you mentioned as far as maybe making some, some videos or uh, so I think writing that, and drawing so, versus audio? Yeah, so I've been leaning towards the video and I've spent the last several months. So I went through your class on how to record a video mm -hmm. of yourself sketchnoting. So I went through that class um, this spring. That was sort of my my fun time <laughs> when I wasn't mm -hmm. studying nice. anatomy and physiology. Um, and and I actually used it to like, I, I took a video of myself sketching out the heart and then, um, you know, the way the blood moved through the different <laughs> chambers of the heart. Nice. And it, I told my husband it was so funny because I could speed track my way through the video and like without any words, I like all the information was now there on oh, you yeah. know, how the blood moved from here to here and around there and, and <laughs> everything. So, so I've been playing with the video now for a few months and feel pretty comfortable with that. But I have, <laughs> I guess this nagging question that I can be so distracted by the video that I miss the message sometimes. Hmm, so like, so like I love your sketch note videos, but I almost watch them twice. One mm -hmm. to watch the the visual and the other I will not watch you. I'll listen and I'll sketch what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Um interesting. Because I can get so like attracted to the drawing and the visual of the video that I, I miss the message. So I I guess maybe my next step would be to find out if that's true for other people with ADHD or you know right. is that is that more you know my combo of maybe the visual processing um with the with the ADHD and and find out you know do people does it seem like there's a a better mode of learning you know mm -hmm. is it audio is it video I know I I hear people with ADHD saying they often watch or listen to things at one and a half speed on mm -hmm. um on YouTube or right. on you know podcasts in order to keep it engaging um at a a faster clip and I, you know, I heard someone say that they listen to all their audiobooks on, hmm. you know, one and a half to double speed because their brain can process it that fast. Right. Um, and so so yeah, that just makes me kind of curious. Huh. About, yeah. Yeah. The format. If right. my audience, you know, if my audience is individuals with ADHD trying to figure out which hmm. of those is the best starting point. Um yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that's a that's a great instinct to be, um, you know, already thinking about your audience and uh, thinking about what format might be the best way for uh, them to explore the things that, that you'd like to create. Um, yeah. And that's a really interesting point, too, just about uh, sketch noted videos and how you you process them. And um, I think that's not necessarily uh uncommon either um yeah it's when i think about the the videos that i make um it's uh one i feel like there's just so much more exploration that i want to do in in that realm of style and format uh because you know the the vast majority of what i do um all of the drawing and, and the writing is very much sped up um, right. So the, the pace can feel probably like frantic at times. Uh, and I can see viewing it a couple of times with a different lens, um, and just kind of contrasting that style of video to, um, I think often of videos that I've seen from Dave Gray, where he is, um, 
drawing and writing in real time while talking through it, all kind of like in a single take. And I find that format really <laughs> intriguing and appealing as well. Um, it's it's somewhat like of a of a slower pace, but um, he keeps it engaging. Uh, so that's all to say that I think there's room to explore, even if you choose a video format. Um, there's uh, yeah, different ways to approach the the pacing of those videos, the blending of the the visuals in the audio, um, and potentially if you wanted like your face on camera, some as well. Uh, and one thing that uh, I have enjoyed about having, you know, choosing to make video kind of my my primary format is that it does allow for um, fairly easy repurposing of that into different formats. So, uh, you know, you put a decent amount of time into creating a, a video, but then in my case, in addition to having that sketch noted video that lives on YouTube, I can also create um, kind of a blog post around it where it's, you know, I can take screenshots of the video throughout it um, and then write it up a little bit so that folks can have that static image and written description for people right. to enjoy that yeah. format. And what could be fun for you to explore is even if you choose video as a, as a format, you could, as, as the primary format, you could kind of um, create that video in a way where just the audio is valuable as well. Uh, so that if folks just wanted to listen to it, that could be their primary format. And then maybe you could also, you know, if you turn that into like a podcast, you could also say, hey, there's also a visual of what I just talked about and, you know, head over to this this page to check out that visual. Um, right. And I, you know, on your courses, how you have your video, I, I'm already forgetting how it was before Mighty Networks, but on right. Mighty Networks, um, yeah. how you have the video and then it afterwards you have your action points and you have the the static image of sort of your completed sketch of mm -hmm. everything you talked about in that lesson like i love that uh, that is super helpful um for me like i said i i actually sketch out your teachings as i listen to them um nice because that just helps me process it um but but yeah, thank you. I appreciate those thoughts. I actually love your sped up videos. Um, cool. I think I tried to to watch one with real time talking, and I thought he was so like really good at talking while he was drawing. Um, I definitely thought this is way too slow. <laughs> 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 yeah, I was like, I need this to go faster. Right, so, uh, right. So yeah, I um I appreciate, and I had no idea how fast you have to speed up because my daughter did mm. some sketches that I um I tried to like multiply it by four, and I was like, mm. oh, that's still too slow. And mm -hmm. <laughs> I ended up, you know, multiplying it, you know, another four and beyond that. Um, yeah, and just to realize, like, wow, it it does take so much more time in real time to do this. Um, yeah. So, yeah. It's true. And it's nice to also like, uh, not have to worry about like knowing that I'm going to speed up all those, the, those things. It's nice to then when I'm actually recording it and sketching it, like not worry about going fast. Nice. Right? Yeah. Being, yeah. Like, take and the time. I, I did the same thing with my daughter. I was like, you know, don't yeah. worry about if you mess up, just keep going. Like I'm going to edit it down. So yeah. You know. Yeah. You're totally fine. Just erase it and I'll just cut out that part. And so, yeah, I like how go. it reduces the, the stress level. So, yeah, for sure. Um, well, it, it sounds like you're in a good place to kind of, uh, uh, hit the ground running and like, you know, start, um, making things and, and putting things out there. And then, you know, it can be this iterative process early on um, as you make and share things and then actually, you know, get reactions from folks that are kind of in that, that target audience. Right. Um, what are you feeling like maybe as kind of a way to, to wrap up our chat today? Uh, 
what are you feeling most most drawn to as far as a, f a first format to to try out? So you know, I like the idea of um, of testing some um, short videos using sketch noting, maybe around just a single tool, you know, like mm, that that I could, you know, put together a, you know, maybe one to three minute video that just talks about ways to use a specific tool. Um, and, you know, seeing how that resonates with people, you know, putting it up on Instagram and on some Facebook groups and um, seeing if that's something that people respond to and find helpful or say they, you know, would like to learn more or yes, I use this all the time, you know, just, yeah, yeah, I think that would, so I think like maybe playing with some short videos like that. And at the same time, I think maybe working on that research and of um, mm. asking uh, in some of the ADHD forums about uh, audio versus video. Um, yeah. And sort of trying to figure out like what what might be the best combo of using those. Um, I know short videos are, tend to be good for everyone. And I think mm -hmm. that's probably even more true for my audience. Um, so, so yeah, I think maybe working on that research and trying to put together my first um, one or two, you know, short informative uh little videos that are using um sketch noting as a way to communicate a tool i think this would be good first step nice yeah no i love it and i i love how that's why i think you're spot on with the appeal of short uh videos to to everyone but maybe particularly um folks with adhd and that also kind of lowers the uh, investment level and, and time process on your end too, and starting to uh, make some of these. So I feel like that's, that's a helpful thing if it, you know, uh, if your, your task is to make a one to two minute video versus like a, a 20 minute video. Uh, I think that's a good, that's a great way to, to get started and get the, uh, get the ball moving and get that like momentum going with the, the creation right. and, and I like that it doesn't the... feel it doesn't feel as overwhelming as the idea of I'm building yeah. a class you yeah. know it's like let's let's try building a few videos <laughs> that you are you know 30 seconds to a minute long that talk right. about a particular tool yeah um, yeah I think that would be a great way for me to sort of start and do research and you know be learning in the process as well yeah so. Yeah. And I think like the the path to that um, point of like making a, a course or, you know, gathering a community around that topic, like that's a pretty clear path in my mind, too. So like you're you're setting yourself up for that as well in, right. in that, that process. So yep. I think that's great. Well, cool. Thanks, Doug. That was some yeah. good, good thoughts. Yeah, thank you, Maria. Thanks for uh, spending so much time chatting, allowing us to go kind of on a uh, somewhat relevant side uh, tangent in the beginning, sharing so much of your story and then um, exploring the uh, resources that you're starting to build for other folks. I think they're valuable and needed, and uh, I look forward to uh, sharing the things that you make, if you're comfortable with it, with uh, listeners. Thanks so much for for chatting, Maria. And I'm glad that I get to like uh, stay in touch with you within Verbal to Visuals Mighty Network and kind of see see how all this progresses. It's really exciting. Absolutely, me too. Appreciate it. I hope that you enjoyed that conversation between Maria and I. I am happy to let you know that Maria is up and running with this new project that has ADHD as the focus. The best place to follow along right now is on Instagram. You can find Maria there at NextStepADHD. I will include a link to that in the show notes as well, which you can find at verbaltovisual.com slash five. So if you are an adult who has ADHD or the parent of a child who does, I encourage you to go connect with Maria's work. 
I think this is a great example of someone who is pulling from their past experience. In this case, Maria's experience as a parent, her experience with the adult diagnosis of ADHD, bringing in that experience as she continues to do new research around this topic and using sketchnoting as a learning tool, but also as a storytelling and instructional tool depending on what she decides to make next. So keep in mind that you can do that with whatever topics you're interested in, whatever things you have experience with or want to gain experience with. And if you'd like a bit of support in the building of your sketchnoting skills, check out the online courses available at verbaltovisual.com. And keep in mind, anyone that picks up one of our sketchnoting courses or joins the Verbal to Visual community gets access to these one-on-one -on -one coaching calls at no additional cost. So this is a nice little perk that allows us to go a little bit deeper hear more of your story, and help you figure out where you want to go next. Thank you so much for listening today. Good luck with whatever sketchnoting project you're working on right now, and I'll talk to you again in the next one. Until then.